Now, we'll cross to Houston, Texas in just a moment. I've been saying for a year or more that Joe Biden simply can't run for a second term, despite his declarations and those of the Democrat camp. And now the issue's starting to get some mainstream attention in the US, with the Wall Street Journal editorialising Democrats start to panic about Biden. This editorial, they write that many Democrats are silent, but some in the media are saying Mr Biden should announce he won't run for a second term. He could leave office as a Democratic hero who saved the country from a second Trump term. I asked Kristen Tate whether this might be sig the signal of a, of a turning point in the public assessment of Biden's future. Well, I think that piece uh, sort of reflects the public sentiment right now. Uh, I know a lot of Democrats. I have many in my family, a lot of friends who are Democrats, and all of them are on edge every time Joe Biden speaks, every time he's out in public interacting with voters. It has become very clear at this point that this man does not have the ability to get through uh, you know, another campaign season, let alone govern for another four years after finishing up his first term as president. Um, and I've got to give you credit, Chris. You've been saying this all along, that you don't <laughs> think Joe Biden will be the nominee. I'm starting to come around. I think you might be right about that. Now, the Wall Street Journal article goes through some points about what Joe Biden's problems are. And the first of those is his age and decline. They say the press tried to cover for Mr Biden, but voters trust their own eyes. And if we just have a look at this sample of a couple of tidbits from his press conference in Hanoi yesterday, we can see what they're talking about. I'm just following my orders here. Uh... But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. You can't do anything. Thank, thank you, everybody. This ends thank the you. press thank conference. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It's just incredible, isn't it, uh, Kristen? The leader of the free world saying he's just trying to follow orders and rifling through his notes. This is what voters can see. Oh, that is so painful to watch. Uh, before we went on air, I saw a poll that uh, said 73% of voters at this point, which includes two-thirds of Democrats, think that Joe Biden's too old for a second term. What's amazing to me, though, Chris, is not that, you know, 73% of people think that. It's that there's another, you know, 27% of people who think he's not too old. I mean, this is so obviously a man who should be enjoying his retirement. And, of course, the, the elite Democrats Democrats are panicking right now because it's not just this, right? Of course, the cognitive decline is there, but it's all happening at the same time as these scandals with Hunter Biden are finally gaining traction and Joe Biden is unable to answer questions about millions of dollars being funneled to his family via these uh, hostile foreign powers. And then on top of all that, Chris, he doesn't even have a, a track record of success to point to. Yeah, and another factor that the Wall Street Journal points to is one that we've spoken about a number of times, Christian, and that is, that is of course, the vice president. Uh, have a look at this graphic where they say Vice President Kamala Harris. This is one of the reasons that Mr Biden can't go on. He chose her as his running mate in 2020 to meet his party's identity politics demands, but it's backfired as she's shown little capacity to be commander-in-chief and is often embarrassing in, in, in interviews. Ain't that the truth? Now, you mentioned uh, migration <laughs> issues there, Christian, as well. They're really flaring up now because states like Texas and Florida Florida have sent some of the people coming across the border north to New York City. And this has created, as you'd expect, a complete change in approach from a leftist city like New York, which normally says, bring everybody in, make them welcome. Here's the mayor saying that he's at his wit's end. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. 110 1,000 migrants who have to feed, clothe, house, educate the t children. Kristen, suddenly Eric Adams and a lot of other Democrats realize that strong borders are kind of useful. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm glad they're finally realizing that. But Eric Adams and his ilk need to lay the blame where it belongs, which is Joe Biden. It is Biden's open border policies and his complete disregard for the law that have gotten us into this situation. Uh, I was looking recently at the statistics of apprehensions. Just in August alone, 200,000 or more migrants were caught. And those are just the ones that are caught. There are many more who are slipping through the cracks. To put that into perspective for your viewers, that is like importing another U.S. city the size of Boston, Massachusetts every three months to the United States. This is not sustainable. At some point, the entire house of cards collapses. And this is just so typical of the Democrats, Chris. You know, they, they, they have no problem with these horrendous leftist policies until it impacts them directly. Yeah, the common sense approach and applying those uh, common sense values just seems to escape them. But eventually, through the programs like busing uh, migrants north, uh, some are starting to wake up. Have, have a look at these liberal women on TV. They're, they're kind of waking up, but uh, uh, their solutions don't really cut it. It puts tremendous stress on, on, on a city, on a community, on the social services. They need to be resettled elsewhere. Th they, need right? they need to be out. We're this spread, massive yeah. country. Well, and it's only going to get worse with global warming and climate change because people can't live in certain parts of this world. Well, Oh, Kristen, this cracks me up. So now they've come up from Florida and Texas. They're saying enough in New York. Send them to some other cities as well. But also <laughs> climate change is going to make it, make it worse, apparently. Of course it is. No, but when I see these these hens on the view saying this, it makes my blood boil, Chris, because for years, for decades here in Texas, we have been screaming out about this issue. We have been saying that this this catastrophe is destroying our communities. But now that Greg Abbott is sending a tiny fraction of migrants up there compared to what we're absorbing down here, they're all running around screaming, saying that this is going to be the end of New York City. It is infuriating, but at least they are finally awake, at least somewhat, to the, the size and scope of this crisis. Absolutely. And his uh, tactic of sending people north has worked. It has uh, made them confront the reality of the situation. Thanks so much for joining us, Kristen. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris. Always a pleasure.